if you're going to the hobby shop to buy a Ravel model of a jet fighter, would you buy this kit or this one? And why? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. Today, we're going to talk about color in model box art. And I want to say thank you and a special shout out to Max of Max's Models. Uh, if you're not already one of his glue troopers, uh, go check out the uh, channel. It's one of the coolest model uh, channels on YouTube. But Max suggested a discussion of the coloration and color psychology involved in the design of these uh, box tops. And that's what we're going to do today. So believe it or not, color psychology begins the moment we're born. Why do I say that? Because it's either this or it's this. And certain colors are always identified. Olive drab is military. Fast food logos always use the colors yellow, red, and white. Dark blue is the symbol for authority and strength. So you have airline uniforms, military uniforms, law enforcement, all dark blue. Color and shape are important. Here's an identifiable logo. If you reverse the color and shape, you get this. And I've talked before about primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Every other color in the spectrum uh, comes from these three colors. So let's see, what's a good example of uh, primary colors? Hmm. Oh, yeah, how about that? Not to mention Monogram, Aurora, Lindbergh, just about every other model manufacturer logo involves the use of red, yellow, or blue. So you go to the hobby shop and you buy that F-106 kit because the cover is so compelling. Uh, it just draws you in. Uh, and, uh, you know, I look at it at, to this day, it has the same effect on me as it did in uh, 1958. Uh, just a powerful image and you build that model and, and it looks just like the painting. So I have a question for you. You ever seen a dark green sky like this? Yeah, me neither. Although one of my viewers said it's uh, the color of the sky just before a tornado hits. But how about a dark green sky that fades into turquoise? And if you look at the uh, edges where the boxes meet, uh, you notice it's literally the same exact green out of the same tube. Uh, the artist was Dick Kashadi. When I look at the sky in this box top, it, I, somehow I always have a craving for key lime pie. I don't know. I don't know why. But a term to introduce here is hue, H-U-E. This is the intensity of the color. And we have a very high hue of the sky at the top and a very low hue of the same exact color at the bottom. Uh, with a touch of blue added in. And you can see it's a totally different feel, but it is literally the same color. Here's another question. What color is an aircraft carrier? Well, it's battleship gray. We all know that. But if you live in Jack Lenwood's amazing world, it's green. And why? Well, if he painted a, a gray deck with a gray ship and a gray airplane, not, not too uh, exciting a, a use of uh, color there. So, uh, in this case, the USS Forrestal is lime green. And you look at it and go, yeah, of course, it works. Here we're going to talk about something else. This is the pre-S era. Uh, S stood for styrene. It was the uh, hallmark of the uh, Ravel kits from 1956 to 1959, just the epitome of their uh, reign in, uh, in the model market. Uh, but before that, uh, that's why it's called pre-S. Uh, the kits from 1953, 4, and early 55 had a very different color psychology. Here we've got a blue airplane. You don't want to have uh, a blue airplane with blue water, so you make the water green, and then you use uh, uh, colors like yellow and orange in the sky to, to wrap it all together. Or something like this with an olive drab airplane and an olive drab shadow. That's a good trick. And then you've got your uh, turquoise lagoon in sky. And uh, it works, but it was a different, different way of getting there, so to speak. So I'd like to show you something very interesting. This is uh, a Prius uh, Douglas Skyrocket. And a year later, there's another Douglas Research Airplane that came out. And this is one of the first S kits, and it's the X3 Stiletto. Look at the difference in these two covers. You've got a very simplistic use of color, a nice use of negative space with all that beautiful blue sky up at the top. But now you've got a yellow sky, purple buildings, a green ramp, uh, just a whole different way of doing it. And then the uh, uh, yellow and red uh, airplane name is uh, highlighted against the dark hangar. 
but a much more compelling scene just really draws you in. You just want to be that test pilot, or maybe uh, when we grow up, we'll be ground crewmen like those guys. Really exciting stuff. Coming in from a different direction, you have the light colored airplanes on a dark background. In this case, the, uh, uh, the beautiful Grumman uh, F-11 Tiger landing on a carrier at night. Then you have a P-2V Neptune uh, flying uh, in a storm, uh, stormy sky. Uh, both light airplanes on a dark background. Something else to mention is that the names of the airplanes are in yellow, just like we saw the stiletto before. What else is in yellow on that cover? It's the Ravel name. So you're looking, you have a subliminal message here. You've got a Ravel Tiger and a Ravel Neptune. And then uh, the use of red and white to accent the names. That's, uh, that's all by design. And then we get to this kit. Now, I'm just going to be very honest. Uh, as a kid back in uh, Rockville Center in New York, uh, our hobby shop was named Hobby Rama. They always had a counter with the latest kits. It always had a sign that latest kits from California. And I remember walking into the store one Saturday morning and looking at this and just going, what the heck is going on? You got two A4 Skyhawks trapped inside a giant salmon. I, I just didn't understand what was happening. And of course, the A4 doesn't have an afterburner. Uh, so it was just, I, I just had no desire to buy this kit. I don't mean this is a slap to Dick Cashati. I'm just saying it was a uh, a whole a very strange experience looking at this when at the same time you had this kit the f8 crusader on the carrier deck and i had to have this i built it beautiful model beautiful airplane what's the difference well let's go back to the day four look at the color of the airplane it's it's all warm tones it's tan and brown and the crusader is a cool gray much more accurate to the color of the gull gray that the Navy jets were uh, painted in in this uh, era. Different way, of, different way of doing it. The reissue of the Crusader uh, a few years later in 1961, the famous artist series uh, came about. And this was in tribute to the 50th anniversary of Naval Aviation. And Ravel hired about a dozen different artists to do all these uh, reissued kits of Navy airplanes. So here's George Hakamoto illustrating the uh, F-8U-2N, the Sidewinder equipped uh, radar nose uh, crusader and a whole different way of doing it. He's using a model here. You can see the skin seams and the rivet patterns are exactly from the kit. So he was using that as a source material. Brown clouds, lime green sky, green rain. Uh, and of course the gold uh, Navy wings with the nameplate was a nice touch. But uh, again, a different, different type of uh, coloration uh, same exact subject, looks entirely different. We talk about breaking rules all the time, and uh, one of the rules in art is don't put the same color subject on the same color background. So you don't put a yellow airplane on a yellow sky unless you're Mort Kunstler, and you can uh, do some very sophisticated coloration. Look at the anti-glare panel ahead of the cockpit. He's putting that against the black of the black sky. Are you kidding me? But it works because you got the radar mast, which breaks up that mass area there. And uh, the silver cockpit frames are a nice touch. The uh, dark tones on the underside of the wing uh, define the airplane. You couldn't ask for anything better. There it is. But uh, breaking a cardinal rule about uh, coloration uh, on a subject and the background. I've used this image before, and this is the poster child for uh, how you do a model box top. But again, that yellow and green sky but I wanna make a point here about value range. This is the intensity of the colors and tones that you see. If I were to remove the color and look at this in black and white, it's just as effective. You've got the glossy metal, the shadows, everything's working. It just doesn't have the color in it. Let's, uh, let's try this in reverse. Let's start with the black and white on Dick Cushati's F-105 Thunder Chief kit. And all that information is there. Uh, very strong value range. This is a hallmark of the Ravel covers uh, all the way through. Uh, they just had really strong values. So you've got a bare metal jet flying into the sun. You can see that. And when you add the color, boom, there's your, there's your cover. And uh, in this case, there's an exception to the coloration on the name. There's only one color it could be, and that's black. And so you see how effective all that is. Here's another Republic airplane on a Lindbergh kit that came out probably about, uh, well, I wanna say four or five years earlier than the 105 and uh, different value range, to totally different feel, even though it's the same colors. And I'd mentioned uh, primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Check out that side panel. 
And here we have a, a strong value range on the airplane, but a much softer value range in the background. You have a pastel pea soup green sky and all the action going on. This is uh, what we used to call in art school, a rip your face off composition. The airplane's just exploding out of the box as Jack used to say, but a uh, very effective use of color. And look at this. I mean, look at the detail and, and how uh, uh, the range of uh, gray from, from bright white to, to almost black and a pastel sky with the guns blazing. Doesn't get any better than this. Another factor in uh, the coloration and box illustrations is the light source. So here we have uh, an airplane that is backlit. And that term means that the light source is in front of you. So here we have the sun shining you know, from behind where we're standing here uh, at the airplane. And so you, this gives you the nice core shadow along the fuselage and the nice uh, shadow, shadow effect on the uh, wing root. And there's our yellow again. Uh, and boy, you're up around 60,000 feet when you look at those cities down below. Very effective uh, use of color and lighting because the airplane is backlit. Now, speaking of yellow, I'm gonna show you how uh, Ravel used that color to rescue a uh, kit that was posing a problem uh, back in the day. The kid at the bottom with the uh, young modeler ogling his uh, 148 scale F-102 on the desk with all the ground equipment uh, was issued in 1958 uh, and it cost $2.98. And what was happening is it just was overpriced at that time. Uh, you could buy a big aircraft carrier kit for 298. And so even with all the parts and, and the operating features of the 102, uh, you raise the canopy and the gear uh, retracted. It was, there was a lot of interesting stuff. Um, but it did not sell very well. And so a year later, Ravel reissued the same kit uh, without the ground equipment for a dollar less, buck 98. And what they did is they took the identical box art and removed everything but the airplane and put a yellow background on it. And that seemed to solve the problem. Here's an example of two different airplanes from two different companies, but the same coloration. Uh, pastel green, light blue sky, bare metal airplane with use of red accents on the nose of the F-84 and the bomb cap on the B-66. Pretty effective. The opposite would be the same airplane from two different companies and two totally different approaches. Your uh, monogram TWA Connie uh, is much more complex because there was ground equipment in the kit, uh, boarding stairs and uh, stewardess figures and it was uh, there was more to it. So uh, this, the coloration is more subtle uh, to keep everything a little more balanced. And on Kashadi's uh, Ravel Eastern uh, Golden Falcon Super G Connie, uh, the coloration is much uh, stronger because you're only looking at the airplane in flight. And no mention of coloration would be complete without the Aurora covers of Joe Catula and Mort Kunstler. Uh, this, these were really evocative covers. They were much looser, uh, didn't contain as much detail as the Ravel uh, approach, but uh, very evocative in their own way. It was a, just an ominous feel to these skies. And let's talk about Joe Catula. Again, uh, I mentioned he was the, uh, the elder statesman of, of the business, uh, had uh, <clears throat> done uh, just innumerable model airplane news covers and Piper aircraft ads. And uh, he, would, he was famous for using what we call foreign color. Foreign color means colors that you wouldn't expect to see. Are the wings of a B-47 really bright yellow on the bottom? No. And is the sky really that color and the red mountains? Of course not, but look at how effective this is. And there's something else to mention. What color is the uh, forward part of the radome, the wheel wells, the tires, and the jet intakes on the B-47? Well, they look black. There's just one little thing to mention. There's no pure black used anywhere in this cover with one small exception, which I'll tell you about in a second. But the, what you see here as black is really um, the colors blue and brown mixed together. And this allows the artist to modulate the color. Uh, a good example would be look at the difference in the color from the forward wheel well to the aft wheel well. And you can see the distance uh, of the fuselage just from the way uh, uh, Joe mixed the coloration, but it's the use of blue and brown at uh, different uh, intensities to give the illusion of black. And the only pure black on this entire cover was Joe's signature at the lower left. Speaking of black airplanes, check this out. This is Lenwood's uh, SR-71. And th this thing is doing Mach 3.2, just looking at it. 
uh, but there's no pure black used anywhere in this cover. Possible exception would be the inlet ring on the number two engine, the, the engine that's to our left. Um, but uh, the rest of the airplane is uh, very subtle in its shading. And of course, only Jack could light the bottom of the airplane, even though the sun is behind it. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what, where, where that light source is coming from, but it works. I mean, it's the classic Lenwood <clears throat> approach of uh, uh, fooling your eye into thinking that uh, everything's just right. And in his world, it, it sure is. And here we are breaking the rules again. Uh, George Akimoto used uh, black right out of the tube to illustrate this Yak 25, which was the reissue of the original S kit. And uh, here it is flying over uh, Moscow. But you've got the light airplane on a jet black sky. And again, right out of the tube, jet black uh, radome and anti-glare panel uh, against the light part of the sky, very effective and uh, really gets your attention. Couldn't, couldn't get any better than that. So there you have it, a look at color psychology and how colors are used very purposely in the design and execution of model box art. Thank you very much for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. And I wanna say a special thanks to some wonderful friends uh, the folks that you see here are uh, what we call our LA model family. Uh, they go back to uh, model swap meets in the, as far back as the late 1970s. Uh, these are dear friends and very special folks, and they've uh, all uh, contributed greatly to uh, the, uh, the production of these, uh, these videos for you. And I want to say thank you to Sean Day of Ravel and the great Jack Lenwood, Society of Illustrators of Los Angeles. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. And until next time, take care.